Tamara, how are you holding up? I'm doing well, thank you. It's really great to be here. I'm, I'm glad you're here. Um, I have so many questions for you, but first, you know, I know you sort of look, look after the mindfulness uh, whole section in the mindfulness program of Calm, in addition to guiding the meditations yourself. Um, have more people been using uh, your app and the mindfulness part of your app during this time? Yeah, we've definitely seen, seen an increase. Um, people are looking for tools to help them navigate this chaotic, stressful time. And um, people have been coming to our app. Uh, and we've also been offering a free resource page for people. So we're offering meditations and sleep stories and master classes and music and all kinds of calming things to help people cope. Um, and I think within the first week and a half, we've had like 1.6 million people view the page. It's been pretty amazing and very meaningful to be able to support people in this way. Mindfulness is something that I think a lot of people associate with a very busy life. Like if you're traveling, if you're working a lot, if you're always coming and going, you take a moment, you, you sit with yourself, you get in touch with yourself for a couple of minutes. You know, how does mindfulness fit into this time that we're in where so many people are inside? Yeah, so um, mindfulness is really applicable anywhere at any time for anyone. Um, it's a practice that allows us to develop more awareness and insight into um, what we're experiencing in any moment, and it helps us respond to what we're experiencing in a more skillful way. So for this instant, I mean, we're all going through this collective trauma, and our lives are in upheaval for, for many of us every aspect of our lives have been changed. And so we're dealing with a lot of uncertainty and a lot of stress and anxiety and um, turning towards meditation and, and mindfulness allows us to find some space in it all. Um, I mean, meditation is uh, a technique that can help us soothe our nervous system and calm ourselves in times of anxiety. Um, and help us develop equanimity, which is really the ability to learn to be okay with this uncertainty, which is really, really difficult. Um, and there's so many different mindfulness tools that can help ground us in these times. So, um, you know, we see so many people are turning to mindfulness. It's all over now. You know, I turn on my Facebook and everyone's posting about mindfulness and people are looking for tools. So this is the perfect time to actually start a practice if you haven't, ha if you haven't started one. You're not kidding around uh, everyone talking about it. I see like Harry Styles and John Mayer and all these people tweeting about your app, yeah. talk, talking about calm and talking about mindfulness. Like that, that must feel good. Yeah. It does. I mean, when I started meditating, um, no one was talking about mindfulness. You know, there were very few centers. There was a very, there was very little available to help develop a practice. And so it's amazing that we've developed things like apps like Calm that are accessible to people so that people can actually bring it into their homes. I mean, right now, no one can go out. So it's a perfect time for people to access um, these kind of resources. And it is, it's really meaningful to see it helping so many people. But you're doing okay. Hey, I know you're an artist. You're finding some time to be creative. I'm finding a little time, you know, I mean, most of my attention has actually gone towards, um, towards COVID and supporting people. Um, you know, while much of the world has quieted down and I know a lot of people are, um, you know, it, able to, uh, in some ways, enjoy this time of stillness, other people are experiencing a lot of stress around this time of stillness. Um, for us, you know, we're kind of on the front lines of mental health and, and wellness. So we've been, you know, really forging ahead to do what we can to support people. However, I have definitely been leaning on um, nurturing and grounding practices to support me because, you know, in addition to me being a mindfulness instructor, I'm also a person that's going through this challenge. And so, uh, yeah, as a creative person, I've been um, singing and um, doing some writing and, you know, trying to do things that help ground me. And, you know, creativity is a great way to do that. You mentioned you've been helping people through moments of stress. 
Have you heard from folks, you know, on the front line who have been able to use mindfulness to help them during this time? Many. Yeah. I mean, we re we have so many doctors and nurses that use our app that have been reaching out to express gratitude and thanks. Um, it's it's been really instrumental for a lot of people. I, I receive a lot of emails from our users, which um, which is great because as someone who, you know, most of my work is in the studio or writing. And so otherwise I wouldn't have that direct interaction with people, but I'm hearing how it's supporting people in their anxiety and stress and keeping them going. So we're gonna be looking to offer more and more resources for people on the front lines. It's something we're focusing on right now. Without saying any names or any specifics, can you tell me about like a message or an email you've got that's that's been meaningful to you? Oh my goodness, there's so many. Um, so specifically during this time over the last couple of weeks, um, well, I received one this morning from a woman who said that it saved her from a panic attack. Um, I received one yesterday from a woman who is uh, working at home, a single mother who has three kids that are at home with her, that she's trying to homeschool while she's working. And she's also finding that the app is saving her and just having, uh, you know, 10 minutes a day to ground herself and create some space has been uh, uh, helping her to find more patience and for more compassion with her children and herself as well. So those are just a couple. Um, I've received a few from nurses and doctors and nurses. Those are the ones that are most rewarding to me because these are people on the front lines that are risking our lives for us. You know, I was kind of surprised to see you today only because I sort of imagined you in it with a big glowing orb around you, this like idea of serenity, and there were doves gonna be flying around you, you know, that would be landing on your shoulder while you were talking to me. Uh, it's it's, well, it's kind of nice to hear. That was yesterday. Okay, good, good, yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of nice to hear you say that even someone like you who is talking so many people around the world through mindfulness, through this terrible time, that you're, you're getting stressed out too. Like uh, you find some time to, to feel the things we all feel. Absolutely. I mean, how could you not, <laughs> you know, how could you not? I mean, in addition to how this is all impacting me personally, it's, imp it's impacting uh, the people around me, the people that I love um, near and far, you know, receiving emails every day from people in Italy who are using our app, who it's saving, who are quarantined to their homes, um, hearing people's stories, it's heartbreaking. And um, so, uh, you know, I think as a, as a, a sensitive person, I'm gonna be very impacted by it all. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think most teachers, if you go back to the origin of why they became teachers, it's because they've struggled in their own life. So I come to this practice with my own challenges and mindfulness has really supported me, but yeah, I'm still human and we're, we're all just walking this path together. You know, it's a, it's a duality happening because on one side of things, we're being encouraged to write the great Canadian novel. You know, we're constantly being reminded that like Shakespeare wrote these pieces during times of duress. We're also getting encouragement to like just live in yourself and be, be happy yeah. with who you are and how you're dealing with it. But I am curious, you know, what can being creative give us during a time like this? Mm hmm. So, uh, you know, the, the, the connection between mindfulness and creativity is, is pretty clear. Both things bring us into the present moment. And so when we're in the present moment, it pulls us away from our anxious and worried thoughts, which are what is causing so much stress for us right now. So, you know, when we're, uh, when we're writing music or when we're dancing or when we're creating art, um, we're fully invested in, and, and engaged in that activity. And there's this really beautiful stillness. I mean, any musician will be able to relate to the feeling of flow, you know, that beautiful feeling where it's like creation is coming through you. You're not making it happen, it's coming through you, right? And so um, mindfulness is, is similar and it's that we can still our minds and create this space um, it, it, it's, it's a really rare activity that 
we can only really do in the present moment if we're doing it properly. And so um, uh, creativity, a lot of the time people are under the impression that uh, it's an intellectual thing and we need to force creativity, but it really, it really occurs out of stillness. Well, I'm glad when I'm bothering my neighbors by playing the banjo, I can just tell them that I'm being mindful. There you go. There you go. It is actually, it's very meditative. It feels very, very meditative. You know, if you're totally focused on a nurturing, grounding, creative pursuit, you're not, you're, you're focused on that. And it really does create this kind of spaciousness in your mind. So I, I very, I highly encourage people to get creative. And at the same time, I'll acknowledge that, um, a lot of people, a lot of people, can't afford the opportunity to find time to focus on a creative pursuit right now. You know, both my sisters are professionals who have kids who don't have, like their lives just got way busier, right? So I do think the messaging around, like, if you have time, use it, um, be creative, you know, find ways to uh, nurture yourself and ground yourself through creative inspiration during this time. But if you're not able to be gentle with yourself, you know, I think mm. that we're all living in this new, new, it's a new world. And if you can't focus on a creative pursuit, there's no need to feel hard on yourself. You need to do whatever you need to do to get through this time. Tamara, before we go, can you show me like, and show Canadians just a little thing that we can do, a little practice we can do to be mindful? Sure, yeah. So not a meditation, but just a, a practice that we can do. A meditation, a practice, whatever you want. The 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 floor is yours. Okay. Um I guess I'll offer um I'll offer a practice that can be done at any time. And I actually used this when I went to the grocery store about a week and a half ago, and I got very anxious seeing the bare shelves and, you know, seeing the, the um, just the anxiety that you experience in the grocery store right now. So once I left, I felt my heart was racing. I felt um, some anxiety in my belly. And so I knew that I needed to calm myself down. And so what I did was this practice where I, um, I focused on my breath. I closed my eyes, I focused on my breath. I inhaled for a count of four. I paused for a count of four and I exhaled for a count of eight. So elongating the, the breath actually, it triggers the parasympathetic nervous system and it calms us down. So the way it would can, work can I is- try, Yeah. Can I try it right Should, now? Do want, yeah, do you want me to guide you to, in trying it? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah okay. Thanks. So we inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight. And so it, you can. It, it really kind of worked. Did it? Yeah. Good. I mean, it's hard yeah. to guide you because I don't know your pacing of breath, but just to inhale, hold the breath, and then to release it slowly. First of all, it's bringing your focus into the present, it's allowing your body to calm down, and it's a really nice way to ground you when you're feeling anxious. So I like I can that. I always tell you that. I can at least tell you that I felt different when I opened my eyes than when I closed them. Oh, good. Then. Good, good. I'm glad. And you weren't necessarily even anxious prior to, to doing that activity. So I think that. Oh, I'm, I'm constantly anxious. So yeah, that's, good. that's just my resting. That's just my resting right. space. So yeah, that, that worked for me. Got it. Okay, good, good. Hey, Thank you so much for your time today. And thanks for everything you're doing to keep Canadians sort of sane during this time. You're so welcome. It was really lovely to and talk to you. And take care of yourself. Have a, have a brownie and listen to some heavy metal Thank at some you. point too.
That's a good idea. Heavy metal. I'm going to put it on the calendar. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.